What makes a great story? Wow, that's a, that's a great question. That's a very big, broad question. Um, what makes a great story, to me where it starts, is a really compelling problem that is going to take the whole story to be solved. That millions of strangers consuming that story would be able to identify with this problem and care that it gets solved and be really entertained by the process of watching people try to solve it. So that's kind of a lot of things in one, but to me, that's kind of where it all starts with. There's something that someone's going through in life that really matters to them and hopefully to us as the audience. It's really important. It's really difficult. It's going to take a lot of effort and active uh, action toward trying to solve it, which isn't going to work. So it's difficult. It's complicated. Trying to solve it usually leads to pushback and complications and things that don't go as planned. And so that tends to build the sense of problematic situation. So it's growing and escalating, building over the course of the story. And then in the end, there's some kind of resolution that has taken the audience on a journey and usually taken certain characters on a journey where they're not the same as what they were. And therefore it was meaningful and important in some way that they went through that. How does someone know their movie idea sucks? <laughs> well, most of us don't know. <laughs> it's hard to know without getting third party objective feedback from someone who isn't just your friend who's going to try and encourage you. Um, it can help to put it in a so-called drawer for a couple of months. We don't really have literal drawers anymore where we put printed out screenplays, but I certainly will write a draft or even a few drafts until I feel pretty good about something. And then I'll put it away and work on something else for you know, two or three months. And then when I come back to it, I have a much better objective sense of what works and doesn't work than I had when I was finishing that draft. So getting that objectivity, that perspective that's outside the perspective of the writer who's just trying to make it work, but the evaluator who's just seeing it for the first time and finding fault with it is hard to do. And it can help to have those sort of built in delays between you writing it and then you looking at it again. Um, and of course, other people can give you that perspective as well. But you know, all you can really do is say, well, here are the principles of what makes something good. And here's what I think is good. And here's what I'm trying to do that I think is good. And here's me doing it to the best of my ability. But I think you always end up with something that you're like, people may all think this sucks. I may not have anybody that likes this, or at least the right people aren't gonna like this. That's always very possible. And I certainly go through that with everything I've ever written things that people loved and things that people didn't love. I had that same insecurity. And I remember feeling, uh, feeling encouraged when I read, I think it was John Steinbeck, like some journal entry, like before, I wanna say before Grapes of Wrath, where he was so insecure about what he was writing, it's not gonna live up to the success he had on some other thing. And he would talk about what he was writing about and why it just wasn't working and no one's going to like it. And so it's kind of like a built in insecurity that you have. I mean, maybe some people don't have it. Maybe some people think everything they write is great. But in my experience, the people that are the, the that do the best usually have a pretty highly developed self-critical sensibility, maybe to their detriment. Maybe it goes too far to where you don't trust in any of your stuff being of value. Um, so, but, but you can go too far in either direction. You don't really know if it sucks. You just suspect it might suck or you're worried people are going to say that it does. So in the end, like all you can really do is learn the principles, uh, you know, learn and study and understand what makes things work and then try to please yourself. Try to write something you would really want to see. So that something that fulfills the things that you most love and then get that objective perspective however you can and and uh, and then hope for the best because you never really know, you know, what other people are going to say. Yeah, that's where I was going with that. And, and you, you, you said it before I was even able to um, go there. And, and that is, do you find most writers are the, of the camp that they they're so critical of their own work or are they of the equally detrimental camp, which is everything they do is amazing and the world's just waiting for it. That can be just as damaging. Yeah. And well, more damaging. I think. Yeah. Well, you think yeah. so? Yeah, I think I think most writers who've been doing it for a while tend to be more in the camp of, wow, this is hard and I like what I'm writing sort of for a while, but I'm nervous that people aren't going to like it. And I and, and I may be very self-critical. 
Um, I think when you're first starting out and you write your first couple of things and no one's bashed your head in yet with negative feedback, you tend to be more naive and be more like, oh, this is fun and this is good what I've written. <laughs> hey, everybody, look at what I wrote. And then when you get actual, like aggressively negative professional level objective feedback, it's like, oh, uh, I remember the first time I got that, I was still living in Ohio where I grew up and I'd written like one screenplay in college you know, I was a film production major and I was like, wrote my second one. And I knew somebody who knew somebody who was a major Hollywood producer and they were willing to send my script to that producer. And after many months, the script got sent back to me with a coverage that that producer's reader had written, like a two page coverage where they tore my script apart so violently about how just terrible it was that it was really shocking and, and obviously demoralizing for a while. And that was my first taste of, you can write something that you think is really good. And, and uh, when you send to the people that really quote matter that could help move it forward, they're not gonna give you any of the benefit of the doubt that your friends are gonna give you. They're really looking at it like a business. Is this product a worthy product that I'm gonna put money and time behind or not? And they're, if they don't think so, they're going to be, or if they have to tell their boss whether it is or not, they're going to be pretty, you know, pretty clear and uh, uh, about why it isn't. <laughs> and most of the time, they think it isn't. And most of the time, most scripts aren't something that this big producer, so to speak, would actually be able to do something with. That's just the reality of the world. So um, once you've been been beaten down a little bit by having that happen a few times, I think you tend to be more self-critical and and it obviously yeah it can go too far to where you're then too down on yourself or too unsure or not confident enough in what you're doing and also too you could be you could come off some hit and there's people waiting in the wings critics well-established critics that are just looking for blood in the water sort of i mean that's a real you know unfortunate part of the industry there are people just waiting for the next hit of somebody to have an opinion and then they're able to promote their piece based on um, you know their dislike of something that the public loves and having to face the ramifications of that we know many careers that have probably been halted for a little while off of that yeah I mean what could also happen is if you've been told you're the greatest for long enough you can feel that it's too that it's really easy to write something that will be successful maybe you're already very successful in some other related part of filmmaking and and now you're writing and then you know and no one is telling you no you know and so you can you can having too much encouragement i mean it's like a double edged thing it's like you want encouragement's helpful because most of us really thrive on and need some but at the same time if all you get is encouragement that's not really um, honest encouragement, it can obviously make you unaware of, you know, some of the flaws of what you're doing or, you know, keep you from being as, as critical or have as much, you know, objective perspective on your work as it might need. The, yeah, the golden child syndrome. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if that's a real designation, but yeah, that, that would be equally viable. And we know a lot of people whose downfall has been from that as well. And yeah. Yeah. So is there a happy medium? Is it, can you, can you be, do you think that it just takes time? So wherever the pendulum has swung and you fall under that after you've kind of been beaten down a little bit, that's where the real magic happens is as after you kind of take a real stock of yourself and your work? Or do some people never self-correct? Some people just I go mean, into a hole? Uh, to me, it's more like with so many things, it's like a daily challenge. It's a daily challenge to have the right mindset and the right attitude toward what you're doing. It's not a thing that you arrive at suddenly a perfect place where you're emotionally healthy <laughs> and you know how to like view your work in the most sort of, you know, critical enough, but not too critical kind of way. I think it's more just like every day there's a tendency to hate what you wrote that day or to think what you wrote that day is genius, right? And so it's just a constant practice of being kind of almost zen about it. Not let the highs get too high or the lows get too low. Not be too down yourself or too in love with everything you've ever done either. But just be kind of like, I'm just, it's like a practice, like a spiritual practice. I'm practicing at writing. I'm writing every day. And a big part of writing is practicing the consciousness that works the best to be writing and producing stuff that you feel you know decent about and that consciousness is kind of like letting go of 
opinions and even your own opinion to some extent at a certain point and letting go of ego and just be trying to like invite and allow ideas and explore ideas in a kind of a playful way, knowing that there will be time later for the critical mind to come in and hash through all of it. Um, but that critical mind can really strangle the creative process when what you need most of the time is more ideas, not more criticism. So, but for me, that's a daily challenge to not get too critical or, you know, and, or, or not get too overly um, confident to the point of, you know, not putting something through the rigors of the creative process of rewriting and so forth, but to just be like present in the creative idea state and then critical, I need to be critical, but not too critical. I, I don't feel like I'll ever get to a place where I've got that all so handled and I'm just great at that. It's like I have to work at it daily.